deep brain stimulation for obsessive compulsive disorder. Brian Coppell and Martin Figueiredo. So we're gonna talk about obsessive compulsive disorder and what we can do for it uh, surgically. So this is a very serious neuropsychiatric condition with intrusive thoughts. So thoughts um, that the patient doesn't want but can't uh, think of something else and, and responding to it with this uh, irresistible urge to neutralize the thought or to check whether the thought was true or not. This is a disorder that can happen in patients that are complete, completely aware of the irrationality of these thoughts and these behaviors, but nevertheless, they can't stop it. So it's obsessions and compulsions. It's very common in the general population. Um, an estimate of 2 million people in the US, um, an estimate of 200,000 new patients every year. Um, and we're gonna look at um, how we can treat this with uh, surgical, surgical interventions. So the most effective treatment for OCD is uh, behavioral therapy and medications. ERP, this is exposure and response prevention, where the patient is invited to uh, think about the obsession, which is the exposure part, without giving into the compulsions. For example, touching a contaminated bin without washing their hands. And that creates anxiety, but eventually the anxiety will be extinguished and the patient can continue. Uh, if that doesn't work, <clears throat> it needs to be assisted with medication, usually serotonergic or dopaminergic agents. But if that doesn't work, and there's actually a, a, a substantial fraction of all patients that don't respond to these first line treatments, deep brain stimulation is an option. We assessed the patient for deep brain stimulation. He was a 40 year old male and he had had OCD along with tics, which is uh, occurring very commonly together since childhood. These were mostly obsessions, which are very typical for OCD of harming someone else or harm, harming himself, uh, more specifically through poking uh, his eyes. And he felt the constant anxiety or urge to potentially poke his eyes. And then he had to compulsively ritualize, neutralize these urges and these anxieties for hours and hours. And this significantly decreased his daily life quality. He was unable to live in his own house because everything was contaminated. He had to stop working and he had a very um, high score of 30 out of a max of 40 on the while the, the Yale Brown obsessive compulsive skill, the Y box. So uh, we tried to treat him with all different um, treatments, including medications, also clomipramine, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is another form of non-invasive neuromodulation, even electroshocks, which doesn't generally help for OCD, but it can alleviate the secondary depressive symptoms, and of course, also exposure and response prevention. We assessed him, including his treatment history, um, and because he was completely refractory and had a, a, a clear a picture of OCD, we consented him for a deep brain stimulation. The, the region that we choose is the anterior limb of the internal capsule, and, and Brian Coppell will talk more about that. Over the years, there have been several targets in this region that have been explored for the treatment of OCD from a surgical basis. In our group at Mount Sinai, we use the anterior limb of the internal capsule, or ALIC for short. Prior to the surgery, the patient undergoes a high-resolution volumetric mapping MRI and volumetric CT scan under general anesthesia to minimize any motion. Utilizing a surgical planning station, the targets are selected and guided by tractographic analysis. On the day of the surgery, a stereotactic head frame is placed under local anesthesia and an intraoperative CT registration scan is obtained. This is in turn fused with a preoperative MRI containing the selected targets. I will now talk about the current targeting strategy with our group. There are two major subdivisions within the anterior limb of the internal capsule. A medial segment that is biased towards the thalamus 
and the medial prefrontal cortex, a lateral segment that is biased towards the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex. At the very bottom of the anterior limb of the internal capsule, there exists another fiber tract known as the palatal thalamic tract, which is an outflow tract from the globus pallidus going towards the thalamus. Our strategy involves a patient-specific connectomic-based targeting method. In this methodology, we identify these medial and lateral segments that are very specific to a patient's anatomy. Furthermore, we identify an anchor point just in the anterior medial GPE, which corresponds to the outflow palatal thalamic tract. By putting these all together, this ensures engagement with all key anatomical regions. We put this together by combining the connectivity mapping strategy using fiber track or tractographic analysis, along with volume of tissue activation models that identify areas within the ventral capsule that results in the most profound effects on the obsessive compulsive phenotype. Together, this is an example of how the strategy is placed or utilized in the operating room. The blue and green lines represents the trajectories towards the target. The white spot seen in this particular region here on the right side and on the left side represents the intended initial segment of activation in the postoperative period. The placement of the DBS electrodes and impulse generator is done in a stage fashion. On the day of the surgery, once again, the head frame is placed under local anesthesia and the imaging is obtained. This is in turn fused with the preoperative imaging as discussed. This plan is fused within the surgical planning station. Initially, a microelectrode recording electrode is first placed along the targeting trajectory. Another CT scan is confirmed. The actual placement of this microelectrode, when this is considered within tolerance of where we wish to place the DBS lead, the final DBS electrode is placed. The patient is typically discharged home the following day, and a second electrode is placed one month, followed by the impulse generator. The beauty about this implantation technique and about modern technology with segmented leads is that you now can stimulate in specific directions. And if you map that on the tractography, of the pre-operative scans fused with the post-operative post CT, you can actually steer the stimulation towards specific connections that we know are involved in different aspects, different symptoms of OCD. So to develop a very personalized strategy for specific patients with a specific set of obsessions and compulsions and mood and anxiety symptoms. And this is what we applied for this patient based on this mapping. Uh, we um, we decided that the, the 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 second contact you can see depicted here from the top was going to be most strategically situated in these connections. Um, we tested nevertheless each uh, contact and each segment separately. Interestingly, he started Im improving most and very acutely um, at contact one, but that may still be an after effect of. Uh, the prior stimulation in the, in the contact two, which was also the one that we defied, defined based on our tractography to be the most uh, effective one. So we send the patient home on with the stimulation on that second contact. Unfortunately, the first month he didn't uh, notice any improvement. In fact, he became very desperate because this was uh, his last hope. So when he came in next month, we increased the amplitude in the same location. We titrated it up in steps of half a milliamp up to six milliamp. And then he immediately started to improve. He started to immediately feel less anxious, calmer. And in the month thereafter, he was able to go back to his old house. He started socializing, started dating, he even resumed working. Um, and there were still some residual compulsions, which is why the next visit, we further increased the amplitude with just half a milliamp. And that made him completely lose all of his residual OCD symptoms. Six months later, he was almost still almost free of OCD. None of the 
eye poking compulsions anymore, some habitual rituals for which we indicated him for additional cognitive behavioral therapy. As of today, he's still up and down struggling with some of these um, residual symptoms, but otherwise he's doing great and he's doing very well. And this is a great example of how DBS can um, offer huge um, um, benefits for these otherwise completely treatment resistant patients. In general, uh, we see uh, that six out of 10 patients have a, a meaningful response, which is this patient. Overall, this uh, case vignette uh, emphasizes the unique multidisciplinary talents of our uh, Center for Neuromodulation, uh, bringing together uh, neurosurgeons, neuropsychiatrists, and uh, biomedical engineers to create a unique patient-specific treatment plan around deep brain stimulation therapy for obsessive-compulsive disorder.